Hi friend, Linda Nenna here with a new episode of Growing Down. Um, so this is kind of a continuation of the last episode. And uh, because I ended that episode with saying that that to follow the hunger or the longing, the yearning to be whole, you need to grow down and reach into the depths of you and bring what you find into the light and with unfailing discernment decide what stays and what needs to go, what belongs to you and what has been planted inside of you. And after recording the episode, a question came to me. It's kind of from the etherical pain it landed inside of me and the question was, what is indigenous to the land of you? And it is this question that I would like for us to dive into and explore uh, in this episode. But before, before we dive into that, I want to first of all say thank you to all of you who uh, is supporting me on this uh, journey with this uh, offering, this podcast, to all the messages of encouragement and also all the, the sharings of ideas and questions and thoughts and reflections that has come up when you listen to my last episode and to the conversations around that that I've had. Um, I think one of the, the best and most beautiful ways of, of evolving is to share stories, to listen to our own stories and to hear and receive the stories of others. Um, that is I'm not, I would, I, I'm, I don't know if this, I might jump here. <clears throat> I don't see myself as a teacher. I'm not necessarily here to teach you anything, even though some of the things I might share might be teachings. But I'm more, I'm always more interested in what, what emerges out of a kind of shared experience. Um, which you probably know if you've ever come to any of my my uh, group offerings or private sessions that I don't teach much. I offer I offer things as as guidance or avenues of exploration, and then we kind of weave something out of it together. And that is what I hope with this offering as well. Mm. Okay, so the song, the healing song that I received from Jaguar Wumban, that she received from Malidoma Some, that I now want to offer to you. Ah. <sighs> If you want to get up to the joy, you gotta go deep. So go down, go down, go down. If you want to get up to the joy, you gotta go deep. So go down, go down, go down. Go down, go down, go down. Mm. I want to say that I, <clears throat> I did. I researched and wrote a script for this podcast, and I've been going through it today a few times, and I'm noticing that it's it's jump it's jumping back and forth, and it's a lot of ideas and spirals, and I'm I'm just gonna roll with it, 
play with it. And there is a thread. It goes this way and it goes that way. And my invitation for you is to... There is going to be something here that is maybe meant for you. A story, an idea, just a few words. And... Relax and see if you can receive what is meant for you. So in this episode, we're going to go down to explore the question, what is indigenous to the land of you? So let's, of course, start looking at what the word indigenous even means. So two different, or it's not two different meanings, but two, mean, two, two meanings. And the first one is that indigenous means that something that it is, is originating or occurring naturally in a particular place, meaning it is native to the place. So if we look at a particular ecological system, Within the larger ecological system, there are certain plants and animals and fungi and microbes and so on that are native to this system and are needed for this system to function. So together, these uh, plants and animals and, and so on create a living body. And when foreign plants and animals and so on are planted within the system they might become integrated into the system they might form a kind of symbiotic relationship become part of the system or they can become invasive meaning they disturb the health of the system um, and the same happens of course if certain plants or animals become extinct within an ecological system. So within, this, <clears throat> within a native system, everything has its place. Everything, every even the tiniest little part has a role to play within the system. In life, I don't, I know when I'm saying system, I don't like that word, but uh, on the spot, I can't come up with anything better. Mm. And another meaning of the word indigenous, if we speak about peoples, so it, indigenous are peoples that are inhabiting or existing in a land from the earliest times or from before the arrival of colonialists. And if we look at this related to my previous episode on internalized oppression, if you haven't listened to it, you can listen to it afterwards, or you, you can even pause here and jump to that episode. Um, then oppression is, of course, a form of colonialism. So in that episode, I spoke about how the inner critic or inner criticism is a similar phenomenon as internalized oppression. The inner critic has a, a colonialist quality to it. So what is then, if we just look at all these words, what is even the meaning of colonialism? And just like in my previous episode on oppression, I'm not going to be able to cover everything of about it here but I kind of still since I'm using the word I want to give you something around what uh, what the word means so colonialism is domination of a people or area by a foreign state or nation so it's it occurs when one nation subjugates another conquering its population and exploit, exploiting it, often while forcing its own language and cultural values upon its people. And 
colonialism is the practice of the idea of imperialism, meaning it's about domination, power and control over land, resources, other beings. So what does all of this have to do with the question, what is indigenous to the land of you? So if you take, so let's together, let's take a wider view and look at nature and therefore also humans, since we are nature, we are a part of nature. And if we look at nature as an expression of soul, of an expression of world soul, of anima mundi, or if we want to use, I'm going to use the word spirit um, for in this episode, an expression of spirit. We can see that spirit, and therefore nature, at the same time replicates and never replicates itself. And it's never static. It is constantly, it constantly transforms or evolves. So there are natural and even predictable patterns in the expression of spirit. So patterns that we can perceive in nature and therefore in ourselves and each other, such as symmetry, fractals, spirals, chaos, flow, meanders, waves and dunes, bubbles and foam, cracks, spots and stripes and so on. And it is the repetition of a form or visible regularities that create patterns. So in this sense, it, spirit replicates itself. It creates certain patterns, repetitions. But if you zoom in on two or more components of a pattern, no two components are exactly the same. So there are as many variations of components as there are components in a pattern. And this is true no matter if we look at wave patterns in the ocean, stripes on a zebra, fractals on a Romanesco broccoli, on spiraling shells, movements of snakes, cracks on the surface of human skin, and so on. And patterns in nature are emergent, meaning they only occur when the parts interact in a wider whole. This is just, uh, all of this is kind of a little bit of something to lean on as we grow deeper into this exploration. So that means that there are, there is a, or similarities between, if we look at human beings, we have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, ears, and so on. But no two eyes, no two ears, no two noses look exactly the same. So spirit replicates and never replicates itself. It creates patterns and the components of the patterns are unique. Um, so let's shift to the, to the landscape of you. And I wanna say that when I say you, I don't only mean you in isolation, but you as a part of a larger whole. So you weren't born a blank slate. At the moment of conception, a variety of not only physiological, but also psychological qualities and characteristics were determined. So there is a uniqueness, a particularity to you 
but has never been before and will never be again. Just like there is a uniqueness to a piece of land, to what grows there, what animals are attracted to come there, um, the, the weather, what the weather is like. And for you, these particularities emerges from the joint experiences of all the humans before you. And it is a unique expression of spirit. So these physiological and psychological qualities that I think that are intertwined is something that is indigenous to the land of you. So let's play with this and explore this for a moment. You can do this with eyes open or eyes closed. If you imagine yourself as a piece of land, a landscape in a larger ecological system. If you visualize yourself as a piece of land, And as I propose the idea, what is the first image that comes to mind? Maybe you're a forest or a wood, a mountain, a garden, a desert, a sea, an ocean, a city. So what is the first image? Take the first image and you can do this as many times as you like. Let it be playful. And exploratory. And so if you can hold that image in your mind's eye. And in this landscape, there are specific plants, animals, and so on that are native to this place, meaning they occur naturally here. <laughs> maybe they are still there, or maybe you notice that they're not there. That then what was native is is maybe hidden as seeds deep underground. And you might also want to look at what has been planted in this landscape that is not native to it. And how is it affecting the native ecosystem? And if you take an even wider view, how does the natural rhythms change the landscape? So the, the, the rhythm of day and night, the seasons, and so on. And what would be different if you approached yourself in this way? I'm going to jump into a story. I'm going to jump into a story. It's uh, about my partner, Kim, who works in IT. I've asked permission to share this story. And one of his responsibilities used to be to work with user support. But In recent years, they outsourced the support and his work is now more focused on back-end work. Meaning he's not working directly with users. But if someone asks him for help at the office and he feels that he has the time to help, he still does that. And if he doesn't have the time, he directs them to call the support team. So a few weeks ago, a colleague of his asked him for support. So when the colleague was at lunch, Kim took some time to help him with the problem on on his computer. And Kim thought that it was a simple and quick task, but then it turned out to be a more complex and time consuming problem. So he left a note for his colleague saying that he should call the support team. 
And then a bit later, his colleague came to his office because he didn't understand what Kim had written on the note. And he then wondered why Kim couldn't help him. And in his office, Kim has a framed kind of certificate on the wall from when he was voted employee of the year last year. Or maybe it was the, this, this might have been last year and then it was the year before. Anyways, so his colleague looked at that certificate and said, but here it says that you became employee of the year last year because you are so helpful, humble and kind. And what Kim did was that he laughed and jokingly said to his colleague, well, that was last year. And what I want to say with this story is that, first of all, I thought what he said was just, it was brilliant. Uh, But I want to say is that sometimes we become so identified with certain aspects or characteristics of the landscape of ourselves that we don't notice that they change in relationship with the environment and the rhythm of the larger ecosystem. So, because when he shared that story, I thought about like, what if he, and I could do kind of know that he used to be very, had, 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 was very strongly identified with being kind and helpful. And he is a kind and helpful person, but not all the time. But I just thought that it was so funny because that certificate can become one of these um, that if if he's he's clinging to I should always be helpful and kind, then it kind of stops the natural evolution or the transformation of spirit that is also taking place in relationship to what is happening in the larger ecosystem and that and that things change with the rhythms so for example an apple tree is not always offering us apples it's only offering us apples at a certain time of the year and if you have apple trees you also know like we <clears throat> i have uh, out in my garden like three really old apple trees i'm sure they're close to a hundred years old and there's they are not always in it's not every year that they offer us apples it's very dependent on pollinators the weather or (laughs) sometimes it feels like one of the apple trees it feels to me like it's dependent on the mood of the apple tree if it wants to blossom in the spring or not So this brings us into the question of nature versus nurture, meaning the question of whether environment or biological and genetic predispositions plays a larger role in determining a person's characteristics. And most so-called experts recognize that neither nature nor nurture is stronger than the other. That both play a critical role in who we are and who we become. So that both what is determined, meaning nature, determined when at the moment of conception and how you are nurtured by the environment, both play a role in who you are and who you become. So that these two factors, nature and nurture, interact with each other and can live in a both, I would say, symbiotic and parasitic relationship. 
So an example of that, colonialism, is inherently parasitic, meaning it is extracting resources, it is depleting what is indigenous. So if the land of you <clears throat> is nurtured through colonial in, in a colonialist way, then that nurturing is extracting what is indigenous or native to the land of you. Coexistence, on the other hand, is a more symbiotic relationship. So coexistence is a state in which two or more groups are living together while respecting their differences. And so I often ask myself what it would mean to nurture my nature, meaning nurturing and strengthening what is indigenous or native to the landscape of me. So to kind of, to engage in a kind of rewilding of the landscape of me. Like one would rewild a big green lawn. Because I think if we focus too much on the nurture aspect, the nurture aspect, I believe there is a so I've put the word danger in quotation marks because it's a lack of better words. A danger of imposing upon yourself qualities and characteristics that are not supportive of what is native. So a kind of colonialism. And if we focus too much on the nature aspect, meaning... Um, I don't know what I mean by that, but then we kind of, there might be missing, we miss the opportunity of developing skills and qualities that might actually support what is indigenous and native. Mm. So if we circle back to spirit, and how spirit never replicates itself. In your nature, there is something unique. In your both physiological and psychological nature, there is something unique that you are called to bring to the larger ecosystem that you are a part of. <clears throat> So in the yogic teachings, this is called dharma. And this is, not necess this is not about vocation, not necessarily what you should work with, but I think rather a way of being in the world, a function that you have in relationship with the larger whole, that you then bring, into, bring with you wherever you go. And at some point, you might not even bring it with you because you are that. And if we look at the concept of Dharma, then nurturing your nature is of utmost importance. And to do so, one needs to know what is indigenous to the land. So if I take the green lawn as an example, if I am to rewild a lawn, I need to know something about what plants are native to the larger ecosystem where this piece of land exists. So if I am to re <laughs> rewild, if you would begin to, the process of rewilding yourself, of bringing to the 
bringing up what is native and indigenous to the land of you, you also need to know what that is. So in simple terms, we could say that Dharma is the role that you play in the ecosystem of your family, your community, in the culture, and in the world at large. And this role is deeply intertwined with what is indigenous to the land of you, to the unique expression of spirit that is you. And it is important to remember that this does not happen in a vacuum. It happens in relationship with everything around you. And with that, I want to leave you with one last exploration that you can take with you. So you were being guided by spirit in the direction of your dharma or your role in the larger ecosystem from the moment of conception. Just like an apple tree is guided towards becoming an apple tree and yielding apples from the moment that the seed is taking form within the apple. So my invitation is to Look back at what you were drawn towards as a child. And this can be a way of beginning to parse out what is indigenous to the land of you. So children are, from the moment of birth, drawn to certain things. It can be colors, it can be textures, certain ways of moving, of being, certain places. And I believe that <clears throat> it's kind of children are in this raw, almost very, very raw spirit state. And you've been there and follow those curiosities. And that could be to look at what stories did you like? What stories did you like as a child? And why did you like those particular stories? What were they symbolic of to your child self? So that could be one way of beginning to explore this question, what is indigenous to the land of me? Because what is indigenous to the land, that is also something that has to do with my role in this ecosystem. Another, another thing to look at is which elders in your community or in your family did you feel especially drawn to? So what people, what elders in your community did you feel especially drawn to and what teachings or experiences did they hold that you as a child was thirsty for? So because sometimes we need to seek backwards to grow our roots into the past all the way to the beginning even past the beginning of you so to grow roots all the way into the soil of your ancestors. Because that is where you are coming from. Mm. So I had, I'm going to share one story that I felt particularly drawn to as a child. And it was uh, a story, so translation to English would be, the name of the story was The Animals Around Our House. And it was, it was a story about an old house in the forest. Um, and, and all the animals that lived in and around the house during different seasons. 
so and how they interacted with each other how the cat and the mouse the cat in living in the house and the mouse living inside the walls how they interacted with each other and which animals went into hibernation at winter and what happened when they woke up in spring um and it was also about so it was the animals but then of course related to the animals is um the natural the plants and and the trees and the weather um and i started reading i read that story for the first time again when after my child was born and i was and i and in that moment i was like oh i understand why me as a child was so drawn to that story because it's told it it spoke directly to something to spirit inside of me hmm so to begin to explore the question what is indigenous to the land of you can be a way of inner decolonization of of beginning to restore what is native and even to bring it up <clears throat> from to let what is native grow roots so that it can grow upward and you can take your role live out your role in the larger ecosystem that you are a part of mm. Phew. Mm. So in today is January 15th. On February 5th, Monday February 5th. So that's in three weeks from today. Um I have a group journey that starts. It's named Wild Self. And what we will explore is really about how to rehabilitate or rewild um, body and psyche. And uh, because there's something about the wild, the wild is, it becomes this uh, conduit or it's an intermediary be between spirit and ego or the ex what is being expressed outwards mm. so that is open for uh, registration so if you if you have enjoyed these last two episodes I think you will um get a lot out of the wild self offering there will be some teachings explorations and sharings it's going to be a small it's I, I keep groups small and intimate so it's an eight week journey um, I'll put the link below if you want to go and check that out and hmm Maybe I'll be back next week. I do kind of want to dive even deeper into what is rewilding, how to rewild the landscape of you, the inner landscape, the outer landscape. Mm. Until then, take care of yourself, your loved ones. Uh, hmm, much love.